Well, I can see this being divisive at all. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. We've looked at DC Multiverse at large. We've looked at his colorful cast of characters. Today, it's time to finally take a look at the top 10 DC Multiverse Batman figures of 2022. In the interest of fairness, I'm only including figures that I personally own, so some of your favorites might not be included. Since there were so many, I'm going to do something a little bit different this time and start with the honorable mentions, ranking all 17 Batman figures that I got in 2022. First things first, at the very bottom of the barrel, and here we have Hush. He was made of the Three Jokers Batman body, which is pretty solid. The problem was the quality control of his elbows, the lack of comic accurate treads on his boots, and his weird slack jawed open mouth. If we're being honest, he's also a bit too tall. Next up is Arkham City. Oh, this is gonna ruffle some feathers. Based on the comments for that review, I know a lot of you really like this figure. Some of you went so far as to say it's your favorite Batman figure ever, and I'm not gonna take that away from you. To be honest, it's a really good figure for 2020 when it first came out, but between the stick figure legs and the arms that look like a balloon animal French poodle, I just can't really get into it. Also, some of you were quick to point out in the comments that the bat symbol and the gauntlets are new as well, so thank you for catching that. I also heard a lot of you in the comments say if you just switch out the arms or switch out the legs, it's great. If I have to swap that many parts to make it a good action figure, well you can draw your own conclusion. If this is your favorite, don't take it as an insult, just a testament to how many even better figures are on the way. Next up is Battinson. I love the film, and I'll acknowledge that toy companies don't always have final designs when they have to go into production on movie-based figures. I'll also acknowledge I've really enjoyed using this body for head swaps. That said, the figure does suffer from an inaccurate cape tuck, this really goofy grapnel gun hand, again, it just floats in there, but most especially the side eye. McFarlane's gotten a lot better, but this one really hurt posing options. Moving on, and here we have Endless Winter. Overall, this is an incredibly well-made figure. From the top, and I love the fact that they gave him translucent lenses for his goggles. I also love all the texture on the trimming, and also his coat. That coat is my only issue with the figure. It's made out of such a thick, rigid plastic that it basically turns this Batman into a traffic cone. Now you might say, yeah, he's wearing a long coat, what would you expect? But Hush didn't have that problem. The difference? A wider spread, and a much softer plastic. Otherwise, it's a great looking figure, and unlike a lot of Batman variations, this costume serves a purpose. Moving on, and here we have Blackest Knight. For me, there were just two things that kept this figure from being a bit higher. One, he should have been bonier with a more sunken in chest. And two, I just wish there was more paint to bring all that detail out. I was really surprised by the number of people I saw online who said they still prefer the old DC Direct one. And as well made as this figure is, and it is well made, I would be a liar if I said I didn't get it. Next up, and I know this is going to be a controversial take, but here we have the Injustice 2 page punchers. Seeing this figure makes me feel like I'm looking at a long lost Batman movie. The only issue, and I mean the only issue is the height. Don't get me wrong, I think it's actually on purpose. Page punchers are listed under DC Direct, not DC Multiverse. I genuinely believe that these were meant to scale with your DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. In that regard, this is fine. Great even. But unless they intend on selling a slightly scaled up version of this exact figure, moving forward, your McFarlane video game collection is going to be a bit awkward. By the way, you might be rightfully wondering why I'm including page punchers on this list when I didn't include it on the DC Multiverse one. Simple. I knew you'd never forgive me if I didn't. And for our final honorable mention, DC Rebirth. This one really surprised me, especially if you saw my verses. Based on the comments I've gotten, I know a lot of you don't like the Rebirth design, but I really dig it. I'll agree that I don't love the purple liner, and honestly, I could take or leave this utility belt, but I love this bat symbol. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the simplicity of a basic black bat, but as a kid, this was my Batman, and this was my bat symbol. That little bit of yellow is a nice compromise and really helps it to pop. Having looked at a Batman who skipped leg day, this one definitely overcompensated and went way too far in the other direction. This leads me to my other issue. Once again, he is just too small. He's so small, I've legit wondered if he was supposed to be a page punchers. He's so small, he scales perfectly with my DC Direct and DC Collectibles collection. Just look at him with my DC Essentials Batman. It wouldn't be so bad, except that every DC Multiverse villain literally towers over him. And that's to say nothing of the rest of the Bat Family. With all that out of the way, it's time to finally crack the top 10 page 
punchers. I'll admit this probably seems kind of weird considering just how much I complained about these short page punchers figures. He's literally the same height as Rebirth and in Injustice 2. Even so, I think he's just a more versatile figure. Despite the scaling issues, I've been able to use this for a lot of different head swaps to great effect, and the sheer amount of stitches and wrinkles and seams recreating Lee Bermijo's artwork is astounding. Thanks to that style, the diaphragm joint is way better integrated than usual. And to be honest, the only thing I don't really like about it is the fact that his bodysuit is green instead of gray. That said, over time it has started to grow on me. Number 9, The Batman of Zurinar. This is a figure I didn't know just how badly I wanted until I had it. Basically, what would happen if Batman went even crazier, had a more violent alternate personality, and had to throw a costume together out of trash? You get a really twisted Grant Morrison interpretation of a silly old Batman comic about an alien, that's what. I love the bright color and the added textures and stitches. They added so many extra stitches and dings that this figure needed a little bit of extra paint to bring it out. Either way, this figure will really pop on your display and add some much needed color to the Dark Knight. Number 8, The Dark Knight returns. I'll be the first to admit that while I do admire the story, I've never been a fan of this comic's aesthetic. The weird bloated proportions and the overly wrinkled costume just never felt like Batman. Regardless of my feelings though, McFarlane delivered a fantastic figure based on that comic and possibly the best one ever made. All those lines and details are accounted for. There's some great paintwork on the head. The articulation makes sense given the proportions. And speaking of articulation, it's one of the only DC Multiverse figures with eye cut. Paired with their exceptional carry Kelly, and at only $25 a pop, this really is a dynamic duo. Number 7, Dark Detective. I might not like the Dark Knight Returns artwork, but I'm going to be honest, I downright hate this design. I look at this, and in no way do I see Batman. If anything, it reminds me of those Batman wannabes from the start of the Dark Knight movie. My biggest issue is the ears popping out of the sides of his head. I'm sorry, this is Batman, not Captain America. Not only that, but between the exposed neck and the rolled up trench coat sleeves, there's just way too much skin showing. Also, who rolls up trench coat sleeves? I say all of this understanding that this is supposed to be a stripped down Batman and that's the point, but I'm also saying it because even though I don't like it, I'm still putting it this high on the list. Aside from the ear sticking out, I love this head. The torso articulation is perfectly well hidden. There's lots of little great paint detail throughout. They went so far as to dry brush the trench coat. Even on the back where it could be argued that people might never see it. That's the kind of attention to detail I've been longing for in this line. Not only that, but just like the Dark Knight Returns, he also has thigh cut. I assume they're either going to make a bat cycle for him, or so you can put him on one of the ones they already have made. Maybe not that one. Number 6, Future State. I'm happy to report I finally found his left hands, and I also can't speak highly enough of how much I've enjoyed this figure throughout the year. Even though I've never read any of the Tim Fox comics, I really do enjoy this costume. I like how the battle has a couple of flourishes of gold in there. I also like how the black undersuit serves the function of breaking up the design like the trunks without actually being trunks. Most importantly, I love this head. If you've watched enough of my videos this year, you'd know that this is one of my favorite figures to do head swaps with. Not just how that cool mask looks on other figures, but how other figures' heads look on this body. I also have a rule with my displays that I only allow one version of a character on the shelf. Unless, of course, it's like a multiverse thing. Being that this isn't Bruce, this is one of the few Batman variations that I can show off all year round. Moving into the top five, and here we have Asbats. I don't think there was a figure I had a harder time getting than this. Because this is technically Asriel as Batman, a lot of you wondered if I was going to be putting this on the other list. But even though it's Asriel under the cowl, it's still him as Batman. And it's arguably one of the most iconic Batman designs, so I had to include it here. I've heard complaints about the paint job, and I do get it, but one of the things I love most about this figure is the color scheme. I really dig the light blue and gray. Just look at how well he goes with Year 2 Batman. Also, if if you're curious, I decided not to include this figure in my list. Although most of us got in January, enough people did get theirs in 2021 that I felt it was just a bit too nebulous. Remember, this is coming from an early 90s comic. It's the exact same blue and gray as superpowers, and we all know how much I love this. An argument for something a little bit closer to this could have been made, and honestly, these two scale really well despite being two different companies. But for what it is, I love it, and it was absolutely worth the wait. But if you don't like the color scheme, I'm sure McFarlane will release the red versions 
sooner or later. Number four, the Batman Who Laughs Infected. I know that technically this is the standard Batman Who Laughs look, and McFarlane made this one in 2022, which looks absolutely incredible, but as far as I'm concerned, this is not Batman as the Joker. This is the Joker as Batman as a Cenobite. This, on the other hand, is Batman as the Joker. The character only appeared in this form for a few panels of the comic, but McFarlane went nuts. The attention to detail is insane. But hey, it's an insane Batman, so that makes sense. All the texture and detail in the costume is really great. I love how the belt kind of evokes the old Adam West version. And even the proportions were given a lot of creative thought. Just look at how unnaturally long and monstrous these arms are. With such a limited appearance in the comic, this figure didn't really need to be made. And McFarlane definitely didn't need to go this hard. But I am so, so glad that they did. Number three, speeding bullets. Just as Asbats isn't Bruce Wayne, this isn't Bruce Wayne either. It's Superman, from an alternate universe where his rocket ship crashed in Gotham City instead of Smallville. I really appreciate the novelty of getting this figure, because near as I can tell, no other speeding bullets Batman figure has ever been made. But most importantly, I just appreciate the figure itself. The proportions are so good, I really hope this becomes their next standard Batman design. They'll need to get rid of the piping on the sides. They'll obviously need new hands and a new emblem and undies. But could you just imagine a Nightfall Batman made on this build? Potential aside, I love it for what it is, and what it is is my number three. Number two, The Darkest Night. Did you ever wonder what Batman would look like if he was a symbiote? Or the Smoke Monster from Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue? The Darkest Night has you covered. I really feel like people slept on this figure, which is ironic because it makes me want to never sleep again. I think it's because to get to Darkest Night you had to review these and I just didn't want to. They're mostly fine. I just have no attachment to this version of these characters. It's a real shame too because the Darkest Night figure itself is incredible. The glowing eyes and mouth are really cool, and I love the use of translucent plastic. It's over nine and a half inches tall, so he really looms over your display, and that's about the only place you want him looming. There's a million billion wonderful ways to say no, but if you get the chance to add this guy to your collection, definitely say yes. Or else. And now, my number one Batman of 2022, Three Jokers. I vividly remember the day that I finally found one in Walmart. I had it in the front basket of my shopping cart and I could not stop staring at it. The black and gray costume, the sculpted oval symbol, the Michael Keaton inspired belt and boots. This thing was one pair of black trunks away from being perfect. And you know what? A lot of people painted the trunks, but they went a lot farther than that. Creative collectors gave him a wired cape, or painted him blue and gray, or even all black. Not because they had to, because he needed fixing. They wanted to, because this figure captured their imagination. I'm not saying it's perfect, or the best Batman ever made, but it's special. It's the best Batman of 2022, and I expect a lot of people's gold standard for many years to come. I hope you enjoyed my list, and that it was worth the wait. Sound off in the comments, and share your picks below. For a couple of other top tens, click here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.